Damn shit. shit. What the fuck was Did that? Did someone do that? Okay. So that no. wasn't any normal voice. That, that was, was like a Siri. Okay, should we go again? Okay. You shift yourself to the side of the bed, sighing while rubbing <laughs> your arsehole. Annoyed, I got up to close it. I was almost at the window when I heard it. I can see into your bedroom. Don't exist. Every time someone knock, says not <gasps> can wash my nipples in the sink if I'm stood up. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to episode, episode 34 of Ghost Hands. I don't know why I'm holding my boobies. You're showing off your nails. A bit weird, isn't it? No, it's holding all right. Holding off the boobies. Oh, my monzo's up. Okay. Um, how have you been? Well, we know, don't we? We've been together for about three weeks every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we have actually just come off the back of a um, ghost hunt in Birmingham. In Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah. Black country. Yeah, it was love. Well, no, well it, actually, it's between no. Birmingham and Leicester in a place called Bosworth mm-hmm. Hall. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be our third ghost hunt. Check it out on the Patreon. Patreon, but not patriarchy. Am I right? <laughs> Sister, yeah, up in here. preach, sister, preach, sister, preach. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't want to describe it as nice because I don't. I, it's not nice. It it's was weird. one of the. Do you know what? It was like it was the most chaotic one we've do you done. Know what? We've got no loyalties to Bosworth Hall actually, so I'm going to slag it off. Yeah, we've got no loyalties. No, because yeah, we we they paid. charged us full price. <laughs> How dare they? That's... And at the time, I thought it was cheap to be honest. And then when we got there. It was like Night of the Living Dead. People mm. had like they were honestly <laughs> Brave walkers. It, they were they were odd. They were scary. They were the people that wait. It was all weird. It's all very dark. It was very. Wood. It was great for a spooky ghost hunt because it like was, no, it was a bit. Too, it was a bit unsettling. Yeah, it was a bit like The Shining in there. Yeah, it was. That's and what like, exactly what it was like. Uh, we. One thing we we talk about this on Hans After Dark, but like uh, we have these little microphones that we were using, and on the packaging, we left them in the room. We went to go and get them. When we got yeah. back, the packaging was covered in blood. Uh, yeah, and nothing else was covered in blood. No, just the packaging. But if you want to hear more, and if you want to hear, if you want to hear, Susie's got a theory. But if you want to hear that. Head on over to Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, I'll it's be not, honest. It's not a very uh, appetising it, theory. It doesn't but... make us look good, to be fair. <laughs> okay. Um, so we did a ghost hunt. It is probably one of the most manic ones that we've done and ever will do, to be yeah. honest. And we didn't get much sleep again. Um, no, but otherwise, no I've been good. I went to a festival, Fan on the Farm. Yes. Farm. Oh, my God. Um, bumped into a fan of the podcast. A lovely lady called Meg, who um, was like, oh my God, ghost hunts. And then we had a little photo together and we had a really lovely chat. And then I got pissed at the festival and went walkabout and just like left my group. And then she saw me again a bit later on in the day. And I was just pissed holding my cheesy chips, just staring into a bush. (laughs) She was like, you okay? (laughs) Like, yeah, so Meg's probably not listening anymore because she's yeah, like, Yeah, Meg's like, okay. I thought it was this lovely podcaster mm, that I listened to, and now she's like, She's fucking, she's fucking mad. crazy. Yeah, and I had to be like, Sorry, Meg, I just I wonder. And she's like, Okay. Why are you um, apologizing to me? That's even weirder. She was lovely. Good. Um, but it was really nice to meet, like, you know, to meet, meet one of the world. Yeah, it nice, felt really it? nice. So, Meg, you're a star, and I'm sorry for being such a weird oh, little. Oh, bless. I'm not sorry. I, I'm like, She knows I'm weird. No, everyone Probably. knows you're weird. They've listened to the podcast. They know you're crazy. Yeah, okay. but I'm a festival goer. Do you know what I mean? That's just my vibe. It does sound like Barn on the Farm sounds like, oh, it's for the cute old people that want to get involved in Glastonbury and the things that the young people are doing. Yeah, but it was quite young people. Like, I was it? Yeah. So I, one of the days I turned up, um, I forgot to put deodorant on and I had to go into the campsite area to be like, I'm going to have to find someone who's brought, you know some deodorant because I was freaking out I was yeah, like I can't I spend hate. a whole day at festivals stinking I know someone that's just like I don't want to do it and I was like what oh no no but no but they actually don't want I can't be one of my fears is yeah. being a stinky bitch it's not even that because that doesn't bother me it bothers everyone around me and yeah, actually yeah, you quite don't... frankly I'm so <laughs> selfish that I don't mind smelling because it doesn't bother me but it's that no, I'm weird really paranoid. it's the weird the stickiness bow. the bow yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it's not pleasant, is it's it? It's not. I tell you when we I tell you when we both did stink yesterday. <laughs> because yesterday was the morning we woke up at Bosworth Hall and there were three adults there in our party and not one adult had remembered <laughs> to bring toothpaste. <laughs> So we did nighttime. that thing where we all assume someone else has brought the toothpaste, yeah. which is a, a classic. But don't be that person. No. Never rely on anyone to bring you toothpaste. I was at Birmingham Airport we buying the hard toothpaste, way. <laughs> yeah. brushing my teeth in the toilets. It was, so when I went to the campsite to get deodorant, I found these three like Gen Zers who were like, they all looked about like 19. And they were all like coming out of their tent and I just pounced and I was like, hiya, um, <laughs> sorry, um, I haven't got any deodorant. Hi, um, hiya. I promise you I'm not mad. And they just, they just like stared at me and I was like, yeah, you know that manic gleam I get in my eye when I fly out? Mm. It's a similar kind of thing. They had no choice but to God. give me some deodorant. And um, one of the girls went, yeah, I guess you could borrow mine. She went into the tent and she looked at her mate. And was went, it a roll on? She went, Tegan. Yours is right here. Should we use yours? And I was like, oh, oh my God. That was is... it a roll on? It was actually Mitchum spray. What? Couldn't have asked for better. Know. That's amazing. And then I was like, oh, thanks, girls. And then all three of them in a line, like there was the fucking Shining Twins or triplets, they all stared at me putting it on. I, have you ever tried to put deodorant on when people are staring <laughs> at you? You can't do it. No, it's one of my shows, actually. <laughs> I was That's like, what my Edinburgh show uh, next year is going to be about. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, got, I think I got it on my chin and then I used basically her whole bottle of it because I got scared and Johnny could see me from over the way and he was like, you used about three quarters of the fucking... <laughs> they were like, they're here for the whole weekend and you used most of the bottle. Do you know what makes me laugh about Johnny is that he's completely <laughs> like... he's He doesn't say what you want to hear because mm -hmm. you, you... I'm not going to say what it is, but you've done something recently that you're quite scared of. That you've offended somebody, and when you <laughs> when you told me what it was, I I, I didn't think it's that bad, so, but I'm still know, not saying no, it. He's like, and then Johnny went, "No, you're right. It's fucking awful what you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's down. nothing you can do about it now." And it's like, John, you want someone to yeah. go, "It's fine. Don't don't, don't stress." Worry about it. But it, he doesn't. He's like, yeah. "You fucked up yeah, big time." Real there. talk. And to be honest with you, it's a wonder you're still standing, you <laughs> yeah. mad bitch. But there's nothing you can do. So chill out. That's what I'm he, like. Is this what I need to hear so right funny. now? Hello. It's so funny that oh, he does that. Yeah, he was like, you used to use a lot of that. I was Adam like, kind of does that though as well. It's like he said, "Oh, what did he say the other day?" Oh, by the way, my goal for today's podcast is to not swear. No swearing. My agents told me I swear too much on stage, so I'm not going to swear at all now. Okay. I think I've already done it. Yeah, let's see how that goes. But I'm going to not swear. Anyway, so Adam was like, um, oh, what was it? Oh, I did a show. I did a gig the other night and Adam was there. And I came out and I was like, was I okay? And he was like, oh, honey, you're so loud. Like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, but I'm always loud. And he was like, but no, but you are so, so loud. And I was like. It's the honesty. Well, what? I was like, honesty what was hurts. it? Was it that bad? And he was like, well, it wasn't your fault. I mean. Someone should have turned your microphone off. And I was like, <laughs> so she just cut And then it went, not off, down. I mean, Pulled down, down. Out. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, what? So do you think it's ruined the show? And he's like, well, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I'm not. I was like, just say no, Adam, it's happened now. I don't think you I've can't. put deodorant on today. Oh my God, have I put deodorant on today? I don't today? think I have. I don't think I have. Scratch and sniff? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way. Do you know what? I'm just going to do want this. Some? I've got some. Have you? Yeah. Is it roll on? It's roll on next time. <laughs> I gave you a roll on when we were in Chillingham. Yeah, I don't mind sharing it with you though. Yeah, to be honest, I'm going to have to do this. Which is weird, isn't it? Because I don't mind oh, actually sharing a roll on with people I know. What? I you smell it. Oh, was that, is that what the smell was? No, I don't smell. <laughs> well, listen, well, I'm not going to say. What do you mean what the smell I'm was? I'm not going to say it smelled like a pigsty in here when I came in, but you were the Shut only the one fuck in the up. room. No. Have you smelt me? That's my fear. A bit of, you know, farmy. Farmy. <laughs> abattoir <laughs> uh, Oh, God, like a, Binny. a dead cow. De have you ever, yeah, have you ever smelt a dead thing? <laughs> okay, um, I think we should pick a card and then crack on with the pod. Oh, uh, I went on Celebrity Weakest Link. Oh, you fucking did. I went on Celebrity Weakest Link. I can't say what happened on it. Can you say a bit? No. But, oh. uh, what can I tell you, what can I tell you? I can tell you that I got on a plane and I only had a gentleman's wash in the sink because I was late after waking up in... A gentleman's um, wash? In a haunted as fuck hotel. <laughs> you call it, why do you call it gentleman's wash? Is that what you do? Like that's what that's what a man does before sex. sack and crack. Before, no, he doesn't, they do it like before, like wash the dick in a sink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I just flopped my vagina over the side of the sink and I just gave it a rinse off. <laughs> <laughs> I 
flopped over the labia. <laughs> You put your dick in a sink. Put my, put my, and put off my, you went to Glasgow. My, put my labia in there. <laughs> she put a dick in a sink. I put, uh, oh, what's the... sweet lord. Yeah, I put my labia in the porcelain, baby. <laughs> Is that what, so say. as a gentleman's... So no, I just kind of like stood in the bathroom and washed the important bits. I think I've called it a French... Something French. Much nicer than fudge in the sink. Yeah, fudge in the sink, labia, labia lips in the sink. It's when you do your pits and your your bits. Pink in the sink. <laughs> pink in the sink. Pink in the sink. Disc- pink in the sink. <laughs> pink that's in the sink. Probably one of the most disgusting things I've ever said. Yeah, I'm that's sorry, absolutely Mom. Absolutely vile. Um, so yeah, I turned up stinking. Uh, I had to brush my teeth in Glasgow. No, Birmingham Airport because we didn't have a toothpaste. And I had to buy that from the airport, and I hadn't had any sleep, so it was a bit manic. So if you watch um, Celebrity Week, is think I'm not sure when it's coming out, but I am on it, and I they gave you um, a really nice glow up. Oh my god! Uh, but I did feel sorry for that because at one point I did say to this woman, I was like to the makeup hair and makeup woman, I'm sorry if I smell. But I have just been on a ghost hunt and she was like, oh, just fuck. Like, you could just tell her the face was just she like, go fuck. fuck off. Yeah. And then I was, she was like, do you want some deodorant? And I was like, <laughs> do I need? No, I want you to say, no, of course you don't. I mean, I had like liberally sprayed. I sprayed so much on me. I was I was nearly just like going to shove air fresheners on me. Yeah. Like, those little Christmas trees hanging out my head. <laughs> oh, God. But um, We're I just divine. wanted her to go, no, of course not. But she went, mm. do you want some deodorant? I was like, we're not having a good um, deodorant sort of spell, are we? We're not. Something weird's in the air. Anyway. And it's our BO. So, um, would you like to pick a card? I absolutely love it. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the cards are in a pile. Yeah, have you got a problem? <laughs> it's because the hermit, quite... the hermit was left in the pack and I needed to put the hermit back in. Right. But not in a way that I'd placed strategically. Okay. I want this to be fully your choice. I might go in. Shall I go in blind? Just energy. Just energy. Energy, yeah. Get gonna, those claws I'm gonna, in. I'm going to take my time. Sorry. No, get in the zone. Do a little music interlude, Susie. Blankety, blank, blankety, blank. Oh, this one. Blankety. Sorry. Oh, you've got it. Oh, my word. I'll pick it up because I'm a nails. <gasps> I'm so nervous. I always get nervous. Oh. I'm ready to decipher. What's this? What is it? There's a lot going on. How many fucking stars One, two, is three, that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stars. Nine of pentacles. Nine of pentacles. It's a man. It's an old man tapping a dog on the head while another dog stays there, and then two <laughs> men almost looking like they're doing a bit of a dance. <laughs> a dance. Uh, no, it's the ten. You haven't counted wow. right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Jesus eight, ten. Christ. Sorry. The ten. Oh my god! What is it bad? No, it's really good. <gasps> oh, thank God, we You've need some good energy. Absolutely nailed it. Oh my god! The ten symbolizes Boom. a successful completion of a journey. Oh, wait, what? That sounds like I'm going to die. The accumulated wealth can be enjoyed by the entire family. So, what if this is pod? I think you know when we say we've come so far. Mm. But it says we're at the end of the journey. Completion of a journey. So this is the end. <laughs> That's this is our last ever episode. Um, so enjoy it. If Classically, we end on 30. 34. What is it? 34. Um, the, and the wealth. So when. So basically, you're going to snuff it, and then the wealth can be enjoyed by me. Okay, that's not good. So enjoyed by the entire family. So that, I'm coming into a bit of money. I'd like to pick again, please. No, you can't. So um, that's great. Should we kick off with a story? Yeah, where am I putting this? Oh, just on that Ooh. little um, little tarot holder. Mm, Gorgina. Oh, that's absolutely There she is. Delightful. Gorgeous. Okay. Okey I would dokey. like a story, please. A warning for my fellow travellers. Oh. If you ever have a layover in Philly overnight. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Philly. 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 It always makes me want cream cheese. cheese. Oh, no fucking l- with a oh. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I told you there was a lot of nervous energy. Philadelphia in the room. spread on a bagel with um smoked salmon. No. With Philadel- a bit of lemon. No. Philadelphia part is part of a cheese board. What the fuck is wrong with you? What do you mean a cheese board? <laughs> you can't put Philadelphia on a yes, cheese board. Yes, you can board. use it instead of butter. It's amazing. 
What? You no, because that ruins the other cheese. No, it doesn't. It accentuates it. Accentuates it. Anyway. Okay. I think like Can a cream cheese with my story? bagel with smoked salmon is one of the most basic things I've ever heard. It's also really think, delicious. Oh, actually, no, listen to me. Listen to me. Let me tell you this and then I'm done. Well, Let I'm me tell you this. Okay, fine. Let fine. me tell you this. Promise me you'll try it and what? then we'll talk about it next week. This is your homework okay. to try this. Crumpet. <laughs> and then the end. <laughs> That's it. Crumpet. Toast it. Butter it. Philadelphia it. But liberal Philadelphia. Yeah. Like peaks almost. Yeah. And then some really through. good, good ham. Salt yeah. and pepper. Oh, fuck me. That sounds delicious. Uh, One of my favourite things in the world is ham and cheese. Meat uh, and cheese. Yeah, meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Ham on queso. That's- Jamon. Yeah, all I lived off in Jamba. Argentina. Well, sorry, I spent a year in Argentina. <laughs> okay. Oh I don't like to talk about it much, but I spent a year in Argentina. Did you go? Did you find yourself? Mm, I found something. No, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> don't know what I mean by that. Um, no, I all I lived off was jamón y queso empanadas. Oh, those little pasties. ham and cheese empanadas. Yeah, fuck me, they're good. All Continue. Right. <clears throat> like three words in and we've already gone yeah. off on a fucking meat and cheese Let, Honestly, this one's a goodie. Okay. And the, uh, I, so like, full concentration. Oh, I'm so ready. This is going to creep the fuck out of I'm you, I'm ready Hannah. to be creeped out. Creep me out. A warning for my fellow travellers. Just get my hand. Oh, for fuck's sake. If you have ever had a layover... <laughs> I'm going again. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm in the zone. Are you? Are you not, your eyes happening. twitching? Yeah. Oh God, I feel like I just need to take a minute. I'm back. Go ahead. A warning for my fellow travellers. If you ever have a layover in Philly overnight, don't spend the night at the Economy Motel. And if you absolutely must, steer clear of room 103. Economy Hotel is definitely something where I'd stay, for sure. I was heading south to visit some family members for a few weeks, and unfortunately, the only flight available included a seven-hour layover in Philadelphia. Not wanting to spend those hours huddled outside the airport, I rented the cheapest motel I could find and took the shuttle over about 11pm. The place was just about the shadiest-looking motel I'd ever seen, but it was a bed, right? I checked in and headed to my room, 103. Exhausted, I immediately collapsed on the bed, a bit lumpy but not terrible. Not bothering to take my contacts out, I closed my eyes and let my thoughts wander. I was yanked back to reality by a loud grumbling from my stomach. Right, the airline hadn't fed us. Annoyed, I dug around in my bag for one of those microwavable soup cups, which I tossed in the room's microwave. As the microwave rattled away... Do you carry around super noodles? I don't know. It's not like looking for a bobble. A bobble? Yeah, like a hair bubble. Scrunchy. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's different. This is a bubble. I never call it bubble. What do you call it then? Hair tie. You, oh, well. That, <laughs> that, you're just as bad as the Americans. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. A hair tie. Hair, hair tie, tie to tie bubble. your hair up. Bubble is oh, just a word, geez. isn't it? We can't get into this. Pe- uh, you don't. People don't carry around super noodles. It's weird. Well, this fucker does. Okay. <laughs> As the microwave rattled, oh my God, Foley, so well weird. done. I just did my little shake with my ice for my iced latte and then you said that. I know. You oh, just I, described what happened. I know, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Are you okay? No. I just rattled my cup and I'm like, I just literally saw that. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah but this is a podcast. People can hear. People that you can't see. Okay. They can't oh, see. Okay, I'm just going to sit and re- enjoy the story. Okay. As the microwave rattled away... Like a good girl. <clears throat> You're a good girl. Fat <laughs> bastard again. <laughs> Always. As it rattled away, I noticed a piece of paper wedged underneath it. I yanked it out and unfolded it. There were two words scribbled on it hastily. Don't look. Huh, whatever. I tossed it aside and retrieved my soup. Would you do that? Would you do that? Would you just be like, oh, I don't know what that is. I'd... I'd absolutely... for the sake of, for the sake of my mental health, I would go. Do you know what? It's probably I'd... just a silly thing. No, I'd leave. Don't fixate. I'd leave. You can't leave. It's eleven p.m. Doesn't matter. Have I got Where a car? Where are you going to go? Have I got a car? No. You took the shuttle. <sighs> Shuttles are over. I'd go and sleep in reception. 
reception. Feeling lonely, I hopped online to see if anyone was on. I was in luck. My long distance <gasps> boyfriend happened to be on Skype. Online, online. Just I went online to see if anyone was there. This is written in 2002, probably. What do you Google? Like, is anyone there? Maybe we should do well, that. Well, on Skype, you know, we can see who's there. Oh, because that was just, that was kind of like yeah. after MSN Messenger, mm. wasn't it? I called him up and we chatted a while, trying to keep our voices down. Eventually, though, he said something that made me laugh and I heard a muffled curse come from upstairs. Feeling guilty, I said my goodnights and ended the call with the intention of getting a bit of rest before my next flight. As I lay in the now dark room, I noticed a thin stream of light coming from where the curtain didn't close completely. Annoyed, I got up to close it. I was almost at the window when I heard it. I can see into your bedroom. The voice sent a chill up my spine. It was very quiet and high-pitched like a child's. I can see into your bedroom. It was so soft, I wasn't sure I hadn't just imagined it. I shook my head and reached for the curtain. I know you can hear me. I'm at your bedroom window and I know you can hear me. I jumped back as a shadow crossed the stream of light coming into my room. I definitely hadn't imagined it that time. There was a voice directly outside my door. Someone was out there looking in. I jumped back into bed and pulled the covers up to my chin. I'm at your bedroom window. Oh. I know you can hear me. I can see into your bedroom. Are you listening to me? I know you can hear me. Come, take a look. I'm at your bedroom window. Oh no, that's giving me... <laughs> <laughs> The taunting went on and on, rattling into my thoughts and leaving me paralysed in fear. Suddenly I heard the tenant upstairs moving around again. Footsteps stomped over to the door above and I heard muffled shouting. Hey, shut up down there. This isn't funny. I have work in four hours. Well, what are you doing in the fucking motel then, you mad cunt? <laughs> oh, my swearing's uh, gone. Well done. Oh, that took two gosh. minutes. <laughs> no, who stays in a motel? <clears throat> Whatever. The door upstairs slammed and there was silence. I breathed a sigh of relief and leant against the pillow, determined to get some sleep. I'm still out here. Oh. Come, look out your window. Imagine if I was in the motel just having my vag in the sink. <laughs> and you're like, I can't look out the window right now. I'm Trust me, I can't. I'm trying to wash. <laughs> I'm doing a gentleman's wash. I've got my dick in the sink. <laughs> I think that's enough to terrify any <laughs> guys. Like, why don't you come? Oh, actually, I can see you're in the middle of something. I'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll come back later. I'll probably haunt the one upstairs. Yeah. They're, they're still awake, though. Oh, all right. And cheers, mate. <laughs> cheers, Thank you. Mate. Yeah. Have a good one. <laughs> I sat straight up, heart pounding in my ears. The voice was back. It whispered on and on, repeating its mantra over and over again. I put my hands over my ears and rocked back and forth, trying to block out the sound. It was no use. The longer I sat there, the louder it got until I could hear it so clearly, it sounded like it was right next to me. Mm. Frantic, I picked up the phone and dialed the police. So is this person Smart. not looking at the at the window? No, you can just hear the voice outside. And you're like, if I open that fucking curtain, what am I going to see? Uh, um, yeah. I, to be fair, calling the police is the right move. It is the right move. Like, I, like most people in our stories don't do that till yeah. it's too late. Yeah. Stammering and stuttering in fright, I managed to give them the information. Where I was, what was wrong, please help, I'm scared. I didn't care if it was a prank at this point, my mind was reeling in terror. The officers assured me they'd be over shortly to see what the issue was, and I thanked them and hung up the phone. As soon as I did, silence descended over the room. It wasn't just that the voice stopped. No. Utter silence filled the room. The air conditioner stopped. The street noises outside ceased. Even the faint hum of electricity from the TV and lights went away. It pressed on my ears with a tangible heaviness that sent shivers through me. Next to me, my phone rang. The caller ID told me that it was the police station calling me back. Cautiously, I picked it up and answered. Hello, whispered. They aren't coming, (gasps) growled the voice and every light went out, plunging the room into complete and total darkness. In the dark, I fumbled for my bag. 
I might not have had a flashlight, but I did have my video camera, which had a weak light on. Besides, I can't deny I wanted to film this, if only to prove that I wasn't going insane. <clears throat> Finding it, I turned it on, casting a dim light over the room. Even with this light, the shadow still consumed the edges of my vision, making me jump at every perceived motion I caught in the corner of my eye. Shaking, I forced myself to focus on the camera. Carefully, I stood up from my bed and walked towards where I thought the curtain was. The thin light from the camera only served to give a vague outline of the curtain and door, as though the darkness that had swallowed the room was even now working against the light from my camera. <clears throat> Carefully, <coughs> I reached out and touched the curtain, pushing it closed all the way. Whatever was out there couldn't look in now. As I did, I heard a loud clicking sound next to me, like a latch turning in the door. Panicked, I whipped around to look at the door. Inexplicably, it had opened on its own. The latching sound I heard, however, was the door getting caught by the extra security lock. I could see nothing through the crack, just more inky blackness outside. I slammed the door shut again, double-checking the locks and latches. Everything was in place. I breathed a sigh of relief. <clears throat> That's when I heard it. A sort of... <laughs> scuttling sound coming from the back of my room. Somewhere in the direction of the bathroom. No. Cautiously, it's I It's me and my bad in the sink. <laughs> Go away. Give me some privacy. <laughs> Can you just fuck up? Ah, <laughs> oh, this bloody no swearing thing's not gone well. Okay. Cautiously, I moved slowly towards the noise, trying to keep my hands from shaking too badly. I knew whatever footage I got was going to be a mess of wobbly camera, but my videographer skills weren't exactly my top priority at the moment. Yeah. I approached the source of the noise, but found nothing there. Except for another piece of paper, wedged partly behind a wall-length mirror next to the closet. I fumbled to open the folded-up scrap, trying not to tear it in my haste. When I finally got it open, there were only two words. Turn around. <gasps> <clears throat> I was not about to do anything of the sort. Trembling, I slowly looked up at the mirror while pointing my camera behind me at the same time. To my horror, the light from the camera illuminated a faint silhouette of something behind me. All I could make out was a vague form, no taller than the height of the bed, and it was moving towards me. I broke out of my paralysis and dove into the bathroom, slamming the door behind me. Quietly sobbing, I leant against the door and slowly slid down until I was sitting on the cracked tiles, the door firmly closed and locked behind me. Whatever it was, scrabbled a bit at the bottom of the door. Then came the whisper. Let me in. No. I'm out here, oh. in the dark. Let me in. Go away, I screamed. The voice stopped abruptly. I shivered. <sighs> Let out the breath I'd been holding in tightly. I still clung to my camera, unwilling to let go of the one thing that was keeping me tethered to reality. I sat there until the rays of early sunlight began peeking under the door, and I knew it was safe. Carefully, I cracked open the door and peeked around. The coast was clear. In a rush, I grabbed all my luggage and raced up Luggage? Did I say that weird? Did I say you went luggage? Luggage. <laughs> luggage. I don't think I've ever said it like that. I just grabbed all my luggage. <laughs> my luggage. That was my impression of you, by the way. I just luggage. grabbed all of my luggage. <laughs> so luggage. Weird. Luggage. My luggage. In a rush. Is I... that that sounds a bit French? Is that what you used to call a gentleman's wash? You did say it was a French. I'm just going to a French bath the bathroom and have a luggage. luggage. In a rush, I grabbed all my luggage and raced out of the door. The hotel manager looked at me kind of oddly, but I wasn't going back in that room. I spent the next hour waiting for the shuttle in the lobby. The flight to my aunt's house was short and uneventful. I spent the flight running over what had happened over and over in my mind. Could it have been a prank? Who could have done that? No, it can't have been. It didn't matter. It was over. I was out of that insane place on my way to my family and friends. I tried to put the whole thing behind me and just enjoy the ride. 
I've always loved flying, watching the world fall away behind me. It's one of the most incredible feelings. The patterns beneath you, the rivers and ponds and winding roads spotted here and there with cottony clouds shadowing the land. This time, however, I just couldn't enjoy the scenery. I was too on edge from the previous night's events. The plane finally landed and I just about ran to meet my aunt and cousins. Finally, I could start my vacation and get back to a normal state of mind. I hugged my aunt and my little cousins so tight, just to be sure they were real. We all laughed and packed up the car with my luggage to head home. I didn't tell them about the motel. That night, my aunt made my favorite pan-seared salmon dripping with lemon and butter. Since she lived so close to the beach, it was fresh from that day's catch. I don't think I've ever had anything so sweet and fresh. Sitting here with my family, I could almost laugh off the events of the night before. Almost. Silence descended upon the house as the night fell upon us, bringing with it a thick fog. The little cousins toddled off to bed, yawning and rubbing their eyes. My aunt and I sat quietly in the... My aunt and I sat quietly in the living room, her reading, me silently... Re- I would have been downing a bottle of fucking white oh, wine. Yeah. Pinot Grigio times three. Yeah. I do, like the, I do like the reading together thing, though. That's nice. It is cute, but I would Battered. be on the piss. Yeah. Or like micro-dosing <laughs> shrooms or something like that. Just, just, yeah. just crack. Just, I want to get out of my... I want to get out of my own head, Gina. I don't know why her name's Gina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get out my fucking head. I'm just gonna. I know. I know. This is family time, and this has been great and really wholesome. But I'm just gonna do a load for heroin. <laughs> you do do feel free I'm to just sit a there. Bit on edge, I'll, Gina. I'll then join you in maybe you know a read of the classics. But I am gonna get <laughs> fucked. I'm up. gonna get fucked up and read Jane Eyre. Yeah. Uh, with I love it, it's Gina. Um, Auntie Gina. Auntie Gina. Finally exhausted, I got up and announced that I was heading to bed early. A bit surprised, my aunt wished me goodnight and I headed to my room to collapse. Once alone, however, I felt unease creeping around me. The only lamp in the room was the bright overhead, too bright to sleep with, and with the fog as thick as it was, no light came in from the outside. As if that weren't unsettling enough, at the foot of my bed was a large window and there was no curtain, only a Venetian blind. I shivered and turned on my side so I couldn't see the window. Slowly, I fell into a fitful sleep. I woke up sometime around 3 a.m. to a nod. That foley is not good. Stop it. That's horrible. A squeaking noise like nails running across glass or tile. Confused, I sat up and looked around. Blinking, my eyes slowly adjusted to the darkness. Still, I could see nothing that could be making a noise. In fact, it seemed to be coming from somewhere outside. My heart rate quickened as I stood up and approached my bedroom window with apprehension. With shaking fingers, I reached for the pull to open the blinds. I yanked down with one swift tug and the blinds flew open. Nothing. I let out the breath I'd been holding in a rush. I'd only imagined it. Or had I? As I glanced down, I noticed... The long, slightly smudged mark near the bottom of the window, as though some grubby hand had run along the glass, looking for a way in. I dropped the blinds, dashed back to bed and pulled the covers over my head, desperate for some sleep. It seemed impossible that I'd ever get back to sleep after that, but eventually I drifted off, dreaming of strange noises and small scuttling creatures hiding just at the edge of my vision. I woke up in the late morning, head wreathed in a fog from a restless night. My phone was buzzing next to me. Squinting, I glanced at it to see that I had five unread messages, all from my aunt. I shook my head, not wanting to bother with it at the moment, and fell back against the lumpy pillow. Something was wrong. My eyes flew open, and I sat up. No. Even without glasses or contacts, I could tell... I wasn't in my room at my aunt's house. Oh, no. But, no, I couldn't be. It wasn't. <gasps> She's back in the motel. I was. Oh. I was back in the motel room from the night before. I tried to scream, but only a choked cry escaped my lips. I looked back at my phone. Every message from my aunt was a variation on, where are you? 
still in my pyjamas, I ran to the door, threw it open and dashed to the office. As she slept, planed all the way yeah. back to the motor, like this with a passport. <laughs> On the shuttle bus, like, <laughs> it's all that heroin she was taking whilst reading a fucking yeah, Pride well, and Prejudice. Heroin will do that to you. <laughs> I ran in and immediately started begging the manager for help. He looked up, startled, not at me, but at the door I'd just come in through. That door again? I thought I fixed that damn thing. Without a single glance at me, he walked over and shoved the door closed, giving it an extra push with his shoulder. He hadn't even seen me. Later, I returned to 103, numb and confused. As I sat on the bed, I heard the voice one last time. You're mine now. <gasps> It taunted. Oh, no. I didn't care. I couldn't even muster up emotion anymore. I've lost count of the days I've spent here by now. I don't think I'm dead, just not quite synced up with the rest of the world. These days, I'm the one leaving the notes, warning travellers not to look out the window. Uh. Most of them laugh when they see my scribblings, but I don't worry too much. It's the people that dwell too long on my message that worries me. They're the ones that listen too closely to the voice in the window. They're the ones might end up like me someday. There's a young couple staying here right now. I'm sitting outside now, waiting for them to quiet down and go to sleep. I'm trying not to think of how life was before I ended up here. I mean, I've tried leaving, but I can't get past the parking lot entrance. The only knowledge I get from the outside world now is from my phone and the occasional news program I watch during what passes for a Continental breakfast. <laughs> oh, I, love, I love a bit of sass. Yeah. Whatever Even passes I, for a I fucking am, continent. I'm actually a fucking, I'm a ghost and my life is over, but I am going to continue to do Yelp reviews. Yeah. 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 Three stars. <laughs> bit of a lumpy mattress. Um, but listen, that croissant, it'll Rubbery do the job. Rubbery cheese. <laughs> Not for me. I think the two inside have fallen asleep. Well, he has at least. I'm not worried about him. His girlfriend or fiance or whatever. I'm concerned for her. She's still up, eyes darting round. I know she saw my note, and she's definitely upset. She's a perfect target. Excuse me now, I'm going to huddle in the closet with my hands over my ears. The voice is going to start soon. Oh the my God. End. What oh, is going on? hell. What's going on? Creepy as shit, right? Yeah, that was horrible. Oh. I, it's that. Oh, it's like a spider. Spider man. I'm coming to get you. It's good. It's good foley, isn't it? Yeah, it was good foley. Good foley. That was great. I thoroughly enjoyed that. <sighs> Thank you very much. It has made me remember how much I hate continental breakfasts, of course. Um, are we saying the continental breakfast is like the cheese slices? It's the cheese, it's the yogurt, it's the cereal. And do you know yeah. what? I'm not a big cereal gal anyway, to be And honest. I don't like those big upside down containers of cornflakes. I don't no, trust them. I don't, I don't like them. I'd like a little mini cereal. Do you know what? I love a little Cocoa Pops yeah, packet. Yeah, I do like Cocoa Pops. I go through stages of, but I will always prefer to have cereal at night time. I'd never fancy cereal in the oh, morning. Oh, what is wrong with you? Lo uh, listen, midnight Crunchy snack. Crunchy cornflakes as you get up. Corn, nah, corn, mm. no. Go, go, Do you remember perhaps. Cinnamon Grahams? Hated them. What? You're not a Horrible. cinnamon gal, are you? I, I am, but then, you know, do you remember ages ago when we actually, that, when people, that cinnamon challenge was going around? Where people oh, yeah, to, yeah, I yeah. I did that and my brother made me do it. And it was one of the worst. My brother made me. You just wanted to do it. Yeah, I was like twenty three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was one of it was one of the most. It was it wasn't even just like oh that's gross. It was vomit inducing. Yeah, because of it the looks, thing. Cause what it was that? It was my phone. It stuck in the bottom of your throat and it stayed there for ages. And I was kind of like burping upset. It was horrible. That's Everyone was like, absolutely ha, ha, this is this is going to be a laugh. Banter, banter, and banter. Everybody train. thought it was funny except for me. He was like, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> and I was like, if I get, if I die because of the cinnamon challenge, yeah, that's going to really be one of those way to go. tales. The BBC is going to be like, yeah. oh, new video trend. Like YouTube prank gone wrong. Yeah, and like your those, faces um, all over the metro. Wave pot, wave tight. What are they called? Yeah, those Tide Pods. Tide Pods. What? When people eat Tide, Tide pods. pods. Tide Pods. And aren't they like... What the fuck are you talking about? Washing, washing capsules. Um, you know have I mean? you noticed how I've got okay. a blank expression on my face? I don't yeah, know you don't what know you're on. saying. Um, okay. Uh, do you want a story? I would love a story, please. Okay. Thank you, thank you. 
I lay on my bed, restless and alone, on a dark and silent night. I toss and turn in my bed, trying to find a comfortable spot, but I feel uneasy. Something about tonight just didn't feel right. I toss and turn again until I finally find a comfortable position. I close my eyes, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. It's too dark in my room. I can't see a thing anyway. I guess it takes time for my eyes to adjust to darkness. I lie there, still and silent on a still and silent night. My body is relaxed. My mind is blank. I'm ready for some much needed rest. Instantly, the silence is shattered and my mind fills with fearful thoughts as knock, knock. Oh, Jesus, fuck. It's almost, un- <laughs> it's almost undoubtedly the sound of a fist on glass. Very similar vibes, actually, these stories. But no, it couldn't be. What would someone's motivation be to wake someone alone in their home? Think logically. If somebody wanted to break in, why would they warn me with a knock? They would just break in, making a loud and obvious noise, or try to be as silent as possible. Why would they knock? Monsters don't exist. I could give myself some peace of mind and simply look out the window. But I'm facing the other way and I'm too timid to turn my head. Afraid of finding my greatest fears standing outside my window. What could it be, though? Maybe a couple of birds flew into my window. No, that's too unrealistic. Could a group of kids be running around late at night, knocking on windows to get a few laughs? It's a possibility. Come to think of it, maybe it was my imagination. Maybe God, I heard... This person really overthinks it. I know. It's just I know, lot. yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's like... I do do this, though. I, I go through yeah, your every mind single races. possibility yeah. of yeah. what it could be. Maybe I heard the, the usual creak in the house and my paranoid mind has mistaken it for a knock. Knock, knock. There it was again. That definitely wasn't my imagination. Those damn kids are persistent. They don't want to quit until they get that reaction. That has to be what it is. Maybe some sick and twisted freak is standing outside there waiting for me to look. Some sick, twisted freak. Sick, twisted bastard. (laughs) Besides, he's outside, I'm inside. Until I hear a shatter, I know I'm safe. Monsters don't exist. Ghosts don't exist. God, every time someone says that. Knock, (gasps) knock. No, can't be kids. Maybe they'll go away. Knock, knock. Oh, God. I can't think of a noise I hate more than that persistent knock. Go away, leave me alone, let me be. Let me be. <laughs> For fuck's let sake. Me be. It's not a Shakespeare novel, you twat. Oh, this swearing thing's gone to shit. <laughs> oh, no, do it again. <laughs> There's no hope. It's going to get in and do sick and horrible things to me. Just pretend to be asleep. Don't move a muscle. Knock, knock! Jesus. Just it's let getting them in. louder. It's like an awful joke. Knock, knock! They're outside. Until I hear a shatter, I know I'm safe. Knock, knock! I can't take it anymore. I'm going to go mad listening to these knocks. At least if I see what it is, I'll have peace of mind. Take a deep breath and have a look. Have One look. more time. Knock, knock. I'm going to go mad. I take a few more breaths, my heart pounding as hard as it's ever pounded at a mile a minute. That's not very long. <laughs> you're, Is quite, it? you're quite relaxed. I don't know. No, I'll really ruin the vibe then. Okay, hang on. Let's get back into it. I take a few more breaths, my heart pounding as hard as it's ever pounded. I slowly turn my head to face the window. My heart sinks. I'm too afraid to scream or move. I turn my head to find a pale figure with beady black eyes staring through me and a horrible grin creeps up its face. It was standing inside the whole time. It's knocking on the other side of the window. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. Have you seen that film Smile? Or that like... Uh, yeah, I've seen. I've seen the like. That's I can... how I imagine it to be. No, no, it's a no from me. No, Carol, it's a no. It's me. 
Huh? Oh, we can't do that again. Um, no, you That's disgusting. Yeah. You're welcome. No. Do you remember that song that goes, no, 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 there's no heavy lifting. What's that? I don't know, I just made the words up. Because I don't know the words. What is the word? There's no limits. Oh, I was close. Not really. It's baseball. Okay, words you like. Okay. Not a story. Around 4 a.m., there was a call at the local fire station in Pensacola, Florida. Sorry? Pensacola. Pensacola. Pepsi-Cola? Pensacola. Pen-sacola. Pen-sacola. Pen-pen-sacola. Saca-punta. Sacola. Pen-pen-sacola. Jambon. Pen-sacola. Pen-pen-sacola. Ole! Okay, so we've just been a bit racist there. No. Ole and jambon. What? It's it's an it's a song. Jambon. What are you on about? I thought you were just saying random words no, in French and Spanish. There's obviously a song out there that features the words ole and jambon. It's like song Fuck. of song of Europe and what Florida. are you talking about? I don't know. Anyway, so around four a.m. there was a call at a local fire station in Pensacola, Florida. When they heard an answer, they heard the screams of many people and the sound of a crackling fire. The firemen yelled in astonishment for the person to tell them their location right away. They heard not just one person using the phone, but everyone they heard screaming the answer in unison. 1242 Westbrook Apartment Complex D. The firefighters all rushed over and looked in astonishment at the apartment complex. It was completely unharmed. They took a produ- <laughs> They took a precaution and evacuated everyone from the complex. Grumpy and groggy, the people inside took their pets and children and waited outside. That would fucking annoy me, to be honest. Mm. The firefighters did a clean run through of the apartment, but before the chief firefighter was about to release the waiting owners, an explosion on the lower part of the complex occurred. Flames started appearing rapidly in all of the windows and the apartment slowly began to turn to ash and cinders. Upon further inspection, they found a gas pipe had ruptured and was ignited by the water heater's flame. The firefighters were shot when they saw what occurred and remembered the call. When they tried to contact the number again to thank the caller, they only received the following response. We're sorry this number is no longer... Let me do my best thing. We're sorry this number is no longer available. Perhaps you dialed the wrong number. Please hang up or try the number again. Okay, she's Irish now. And thank you for saving them. Oh, I see. Yeah, someone warned them. Isn't that oh, nice? Oh, it's like an angel. Um, I really enjoyed how you got Irish at the end. Please hang up and try again. Please hang, <laughs> Please hang up and go to the end of the rainbow and find the pot of gold. What was that actually gold. in the end? Your gold. pot of gold. Your pot of gold. Um, <laughs> that was, honestly, fantastic. Hannah, are you ready for a little tale? Yes, born ready. This is an urban legend from Surrey. Oh! Local uh, smokehouse. Mm, love a Surrey urban legend. This is a strange tale of the A3 ghost crash. Yeah. And it's been an urban legend now in Surrey for nearly 18 years. Hit me. We'll take you back to December the 11th, 2002. It was the day after Surrey Police Press Team's Christmas party, a day which you'd hope would be a little quieter than usual, but this was not to be. A call came in to Surrey Police that a member of the public reported seeing a car lose control and leaving the A3 around 100 metres before the emergency slip road at Burpham. That's a horrible name. What do you do with babies? Burpham. <laughs> That's why she's a comedian, ladies yeah, oh, and gentlemen. Just quick off the mark. <laughs> you just fell off your chair. Because your arm just fell off the chair. Yeah. Amazing. It seemed a regular call. That wasn't a sentence, was it? No. It seemed a regular call, yet when officers turned up at the scene, they couldn't find any evidence of the crash. Finally, police found a maroon Vauxhall Astra nose down in a ditch nearby, Ugh, covered in undergrowth. <laughs> there was just one thing amiss. The car had remained... No, let me go again. There was just one thing amiss... The car had remained undiscovered at the scene for five months. Oh, my God. And even more concerning, a body lay nearby. 
Fucking hell. The body was identified from dental records as that of 21-year-old Christopher Brian Chandler, who was wanted for robbery and had been on the run from the Metropolitan Police since July 16th that year. The meaning of the discovery divided people. The national press suggested that the sighting of the car leaving the road just the night before could only have been a ghostly replay of the fatal crash earlier in the year. Surrey police quickly disagreed. A spokeswoman insisted that the incident had only ever been treated as a regular road traffic collision and the fact the car was obscured by leaves and branches most probably prevented it from being reported earlier. What do you think? And what do you think, Hannah? Because that is so it... somebody's so somebody's reported it, mm-hmm. but it actually happened ages ago, and they just saw it that day. Yeah, I'm gonna. Here's my here's my theory. Yeah. I think somebody caused that crash, hit and run, felt guilty, called it in. But then what What does it say here? They discovered the wreckage of the Astra, nose down in a ditch, hidden from a road. But Is it, that a true story, though? Is that part true? Yeah. The, this thing had just been in a ditch for five months. Exactly. Surely, and so if, if, if eyewitnesses have seen this car go off the slip road and into the undergrowth, mm. if you've seen that, but then when you go and actually go to the site and the wreckage... And there it is, just like tangled in branches. But it was ages ago, not two seconds ago. Exactly. And the dead body had been dead for five months. Oh. Yeah. I know this is a bit grim, but I would actually really like to find a dead body. Oh, God, would you? Yeah, wouldn't you? I don't know. One person who remembers the day clearly was Steve Casey, who worked for Mako Recovery Services. Speaking to Surrey Live in 2012, 10 years on from the incident, he said, it was an event... (laughs) He said it was an event he would not forget as he was at the scene to tow the car away and remembers the remains being recovered from the scene. The car was badly damaged, said Mr. Casey. My thing's going weird. Hang on. Uh, It was written off and rusty. It was an old car. Somebody said afterwards there might have been a ghost involved, but you aren't told that at the time. I was just getting on with the job. He added the incident still stirs memories when he drives down the A3 near Burpham, saying he thinks about it every time. Nearly two decades on, debate still rages about why people heard the noise and why exactly it was reported at the location of the crash five months previously. I think somebody felt really guilty about it. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think somebody was drink driving. I think they were in the wrong part of the road, which caused this crash to happen. And they then drove off and then didn't hear anything about it. And then they went back to check and saw it was still there and then decided to call the police because they felt guilty that nobody had found the body. The end. Oh, I see. Oh, do you know what, though? Also, if somebody had gone, if if somebody, if I now say, right, I'm going to go and I'm driving to Stoke now after this. I'm going to go back to my parents now. See you later. And then in a few, and then like tomorrow, my mum says, Susie, have you seen Hannah? I don't know where she is. She's not turned up. She was supposed to arrive last night. Yeah. You'd say, no, she left to go to Stoke. Then you report me missing. Surely they're going to check the route, wouldn't they? Well, that's what I mean. Surely like, yeah, you, you're, you're saying that why didn't someone notice? Yeah, that's what's confusing. That the hit and run guy's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But listen, I mean, I want to know who these eyewitnesses are. Who heard the crash? Who I want to talk it? to them. Yeah, That's what I, I think want. we should go to Burpham. So, um, Hannah. Susie. You know we were saying about how um, if you live in a haunted house, you can't then, you know, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to move out and I'm not going to tell the next owners. And if they have something to say about that or they're like, oh, I'm going to sue you because you never told me my house was haunted. Do you remember mm. we were talking about you like, you have to declare oh, whether yeah. or not you're in a haunted house. Yeah. And I think we kind of concluded that that's bullshit, right? Because you can't prove there's a ghost no. in there or not. Like how, so there is an actual case of this happening, right? So there was a, a couple who were like, I'm going to take the previous owners to court because they were like, you didn't disclose how fucking haunted this place was. Mm. And a friend of mine um, 
told me that she lives in this town or like she grew up in this town in Derbyshire where this haunted cottage is. And she was like, there was a whole dispute. There was a whole legal case, the first of its kind. And they were using old law, like like 1700s law about like the devil and all this shit. Um, and I'm going to read you a little bit about it and tell you That's about... That's insane. Isn't it? Yeah. Shall I tell you about it? Okay. Tell me uh, about the it. article says, I own England's most haunted cottage. In 1999, I was in my mid-40s and had just escaped from my stressful and joyless career as a management consultant. Oh, that sounds awful. I needed a project. I loved small period buildings and decided to throw my energy into restoring one. I started combing through auction catalogues in search of a place. Having failed to win a number of London houses that didn't much inspire me anyway, I cast the net wider. My father would often give me advice over the phone. He persuaded me to focus on Derbyshire a county my family has a strong connection to and helped me identify what my ideal house would be like. Stone built, a mm. south facing garden with at least two bedrooms and a workshop. Lovely. One night, we just finished a long conversation about this elusive dream home when dad, a healthy 75 year old, had a heart attack. He died instantly. Oh. I didn't look at any more auction catalogues until after the funeral. When I did, I spotted Lowe's Cottage, or is it Lowe's, L-O-W-E-S? I think it's Lowe's. Lowe's. Lowe's Cottage straight away. Located in the Derbyshire Dales village of Upper Mayfield, it was built in the late 18th century. Derbyshire is lovely. Is it? Mm. Well, it's quite close to... It's near you, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, where yeah, Alton it's Towers is. That's well, what I know about not it. That far enough. Not that far away. Um, it was built in the late... 18th century. I don't know why I want to read that as 19th. By a stonemason who needed a home with a workshop. It seemed exactly like the place my father had described. I drove out to view it the day before the auction. The cottage was approached over the ominously titled Hanging Bridge and Gallows Tree Lane. The house itself was named after a nearby Iron Age burial mound. Perhaps I should have felt a sense of foreboding, especially when the agent wouldn't let me use my video camera inside the house. But the cottage had everything I'd been looking for, with the added attraction of bewitching Peak District views. I was delighted by it. The following day, I turned up at the auction to find a camera crew present and a tangible buzz in the room. The hammer came down after I'd bid £6,000 over the guide price. I barely had time to process the fact that I'd won before I was ushered into an anteroom full of reporters. A microphone was thrust towards me and someone asked, how does it feel to have bought England's most haunted cottage? Fuck, imagine. <laughs> I had no idea of the house's reputation. There was no hint of it in the description, but I was quickly brought up to speed. A couple, Andrew and Josie Smith, who had bought Lowe's Cottage in 1994, had filed a lawsuit against the previous owners for not telling them the property was haunted. The Smiths claim that they had been driven out by a number of manifestations, including something they described as a creeping presence, like a mist that appeared and thickened into fog. They spoke of sudden pockets of cold, damp patches on the wall, and objects inexplicably moving. Their claims were backed up by a vicar who had investigated the cottage and said he found a pungent odour that moved around and a wall that seemed to weep when he placed his hand on it. I don't think you can have a backup, like, back evidence up vicar, from yeah. a vic Like, vicars are, vic vicars are just as bad as psychics, in my opinion. <laughs> we, love, we love psychics. No, I mean, vicars are just as bad as... I actually think that vicars are, vicars are just as bad as scam psychics. Yeah, I know what you mean. Because they don't, like, what evidence like, this is the work of Jesus, see? the end. And you're yeah. Like, mm. right, well, I need a bit more than that, actually. Yeah, it's a bit, it's not, it's black and white, in it? You want the grey. Sorry to offend all of our religious listeners. Wait, I do if you're a vicar listening, shout out. You're doing Listen, God's work. If you're a vicar, and it's not you, you're great. You're amazing. I was talking about To be honest, vicars. a vicar listening to this, I'd find quite interesting. Oh, I'd get them on. Yeah. If you're a vicar, give us a call. If you love the, the paranormal, pod. but you're also a vicar, get on. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was reported to be the first case relying on the existence of supernatural forces since the Middle Ages. But the judge gave the Smith's claims short shrift. During my first night in Lowe's Cottage, I started to have some sympathy for my predecessors. My collie, Sion, was uneasy entering the house and found it. Sion? Sion. Do you mean Sean? S-I-O-N? No. Are you trying to Welsh-splain me? Sion. I know that S-I-O-N is Welsh for Sean. 
Okay. So how are you pronoun- how are you like spelling Sion, this? Like Sion, like Sion Park in West London. S Y O N. Sion. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm right. You're wrong. I, I, uh, you got any uh, other questions? Uh, or... No. I, uh, yeah, I think we should Google it. My colleague Sion. Thank you. I've never heard of it before, and it's very close to Sean. But it's not. Okay. 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 My colleague Sion was uneasy entering the house and found it hard to settle. Lights switched on and off. There were sudden changes in the temperature and my TV would turn itself on. Mm. There were further incidents. I was visited by reporters who experienced problems with tape recorders or cameras, which we've experienced loads. When when she you're in a spooky place, we've tech doesn't work. Received loads. I remembered the first Uh, No, sorry. I remembered the agent who had forbidden filming when I first visited. And when mysterious patches of glistening moisture started forming on walls, I recalled the vicar's description of a weeping wall. It felt almost as if Lowe's Cottage had a personality and was testing me in some way. The place seemed capable of changing moods, though I never had any sense of a malignant entity. I later got to meet the Smiths and found them to be solid and authentic people. After a while, Sion seemed to make peace with the house and the perplexing incident stopped. I spent a happy four years at the cottage before renting it out. We should go. Only one of the tenants has reported anything unusual. In the months after the auction, some people told me the house would be a blessing to me and they were right. In spite of its notoriety, I'm very grateful to Lowe's Cottage. Seemingly prophesied by my father, it acted as a pivot between an unhappy time in my life and my more fulfilling and <laughs> and my more fulfilling existence Aww, restoring period properties. That's beautiful and just fascinating. Like a fucking lawsuit about a haunted house, and I love that the judge is like, absolutely not. Of course not. We're throwing this out. No, this is nonsense. Even though oh my god, you tired? Sorry, I am. Okay, even though. I would love really like ghost people, but you can't like just fucking deal with it. And also, do you know what? If you have bought the most haunted house in Britain, do you fucking research before? Yeah. And no, because there will be fucking things about it. Okay, do you want another little story before we head on to the next section? Yes, I'll do a creep of the week okay. after you've done yours. Okay. <laughs> this is called Don't Worry About It. Damn, that could have been sexy, didn't it? <laughs> Don't worry this about it. This is a it. bit like, hi, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. No worries. I have just got some pizza stained um, uh, sweat. Sorry. <laughs> Sweats on. <laughs> I was trying to what do are you a, talking just, about? I trying to do a joke. I was like, I've got a pizza in my <laughs> Yeah, back. pizza like, what are, you, what are you wearing? Like just some uh, tracksuit bottoms with pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, I'm not just wearing my juicy couture. <laughs> juicy couture! And, um, oh, and, a, a, and a, a, a bra that's um, flush coloured. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got no wire in <laughs> It's not. It's, like, it's not so got any underwire. So my nipples are down to my... To my, I can wash my nipples in the sink if I'm stood up <laughs> along with my vagina. <laughs> it's so unattractive, isn't mm. it? Um, okay, this one's called Don't Worry About It. <clears throat> you're slowly st- Oh, fuck off. Sorry, <sighs> someone just messaged me. Um, you're slowly... Oh, I can start again. Let's start again. All this can be cut. <gasps> you're slowly stirred awake by the distant ringing as the phone beside your bed pulls you out of your dreams. Your thoughts gather themselves and you groan, reaching over to answer. As soon as you place the phone to your ear, you're greeted by the background noise consisting of twisted screams. People in agonising pain begging for help or death. Not that the interference allows you to hear any individual voice clearly enough. Get out of the house now! The call ends abruptly after what you could have sworn was a voice from closer to you than on the other end. (laughs) The next words say you shift yourself, but obviously I read it as shit. (laughs) You shit yourself and... (laughs) Could have sworn it was a voice from closer to you than the other end. You shit yourself. (laughs) There's a whole puddle of brown on your sheets. Oh, God. You wonder what to do. Do you A? Oh, my God. (laughs) Put it straight into the dishwasher. I mean... What? I'm never having dinner at your house again. Where do you put your shitty sheets? <laughs> your shitty, shitty sheets. Oh, I've sworn so much today. Um, oh, yeah, if you're not putting your shitty sheets in the dishwasher, you're a fucking minger. 
Um, you shit yourself on the bed. It says it actually says you shit yourself to the side of the bed. <laughs> okay, no, I'm going to do it properly now. I'm going to start that bit again. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. The call ends abruptly after what you could have sworn was a voice from closer to you than on the other end of the phone. You shift yourself to the side of the bed, sighing while rubbing your eyes. A call that's startling. <laughs> <laughs> you shit you shit yourself while rubbing. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is a sexy, shitty story. Get on board. Um <laughs> oh, Okay. Sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. No, please. You shift yourself to the side of the bed, sighing while rubbing <laughs> your arsehole. <laughs> that's what it says. <laughs> While rubbing your eyes, a call this startling and this early in the morning would keep you awake. Your wife shuffles to the side, uh, apparently also woken by the call. She wraps her arms around you and gives you a light kiss on the neck. Don't worry about it. Her half... Oh, no, she, I didn't do that properly. <laughs> she was half asleep and I went, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about like it. Like she was a little leprechaun. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Her half-asleep mumble calms you down somewhat. Just as you're about to place the phone down, it rings again. You fumble slightly and drop it. Instead, your wife's arms tighten around you, oh. preventing you from leaning forward. It's then you notice a subtle difference between the arms around you and the familiarity of your wife's. He's too late to save you anyway. The end. Hang on. We didn't we didn't do that story very well because we were shitting ourselves all the way through. <laughs> Basically The wife happens, has turned into a demon. The wife's a demon. She never was shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because well, someone's called and says, get out of the house, and he's like, Oh my god, someone's scary on the phone, babe. What's going on? And she's like, Don't worry about it. He's too late to save you anyway. So it was her. Oh. Crazy did, demon. The wife. shitting yourself thing did ruin the tension. It did ruin the tension. A little bit. But that's okay. That isn't is it? Absolutely so fine. What the, the, the moral of the story is never trust anyone, including whoever you're sleeping with. Anyway. <laughs> that's a great moral, isn't it? Um, are you ready for Creep of the Week? Creep of the Week. Dun, dun, creep of the week, dun, dun, creep of the week, creep of the week, creep of the week. God, we are so bad at musical. Um, also, I really want to apologise right now for any Irish listeners for our continuation mm. of the Irish accent. It's like we've replaced American. I love the Irish accent. With the Irish um, thing. And I think that actually we apologise and we take it all back. We apologise profusely and we're really sorry. We'll never do it again. It is not okay, isn't we it? We probably will do it again. Uh, but Welsh, free game. Oh, I Fair love a bit even. of Welsh. I do. I'm great at the Welsh accent. Actually, that's not bad, you know. I don't know why you're surprised. I do it all the time. It's really good. I know. <laughs> oh my god, that could be you in another life. Oh, I'm so good at Welsh. I think I am actually Welsh. It's really good that. Oh, thank you so Imagine much. we were like Welsh podcasters. Oh my god, this is like a Welsh podcast. I mean? now. If there any listeners want to hear us do a Welsh podcast, we do it. Yeah. Right, from now on, I'm gonna be doing this. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this accent. Oh my god, that's gonna be so difficult. <laughs> difficult. Uh, difficult. Right, are you ready for Creep of the Week? Oh, I've never been more ready. I'm ready for Creep of the Week and I'm from I'm from the Mumbles, so <laughs> let's go. Uh, you're going to love this. This is... Um, so we're not doing the accent. Uh, I don't think I can hold the whole, okay. the whole go story. Go on then. Um, this is from Chelsea who says, <laughs> and I love this, Chelsea, you've put, hi, Anna and Susie. <laughs> She's missed out your H's, babes. Um, Has she put A-N-N-A? -N -N -A? Yeah. Oh, she actually thinks I'm called Anna. Yeah, it's probably she just thinks I'm... Okay, yeah. Chelsea. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, you're not going to any more because I'm going to fucking cut you off. Uh, Hannah. Sorry. She's an NHS worker, so take it back. No. Um, right. Thank Ch you, Belsie. <laughs> Belsie. <laughs> Belsie. That's why you picked this one, because someone's got my name wrong. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. I want to mug you off. Okay. Hi, Anna and Susie. First of all, uh, love your podcast. It's so entertaining. And I even downloaded it from a holiday last week, which leads me on to my email. I was listening to your podcast whilst on holiday and noticed you made a quick mention about ghost stories in relation to hospitals. Mm. I've worked in hospitals now for 13 years with many nurses telling me of their ghostly experiences or ghost stories that have been passed down over the years. My favourite pastime is on a night shift, if the time permits, trying to spook each other with uh, hospitals. Again, Susie. My favourite pastime on a night shift 
if the time permits, is trying to spook each other with hospital ghost stories we've been told or even experienced ourselves. The one I'm sharing with you in this email is one of my favourites. One of my colleagues told me of when he was a nursing student in London and he had a placement in the 90s at the Royal Free. The reason this story in particular was so popular was because of how old the hospital and some of its features were. For context, we're talking so old that the lifts in the hospital had the shutters across the doorway and not two electrically operated metal doors that closed themselves. The story is as follows. Three student nurses were working a night shift, working on the top floor of the hospital, on a ward which featured a lift and a set of double doors at the end of the corridor. They did not have any fully... They did not have any fully qualified colleagues with them, only an on-shift matron who was there for certain tasks. They weren't allowed to do like administering drugs and changing equipment, and this was all very normal for nursing students in the 90s. The nurses were on a ward where a lot of the patients were mobile and able to take basic care of themselves, so through the night the workload wasn't too horrific. Whilst the student nurses were sat in their nursing stations, they heard screaming coming from the double doors and the lift at the far end of the ward. One of the student nurses went to investigate the noise and when she opened the double doors, the noise stopped. She went back to tell the other two student nurses what had happened and how the noise had suddenly stopped when she checked behind the doors. When the three students were sat together again, they heard the screaming again, the same screaming from the same double doors. This time, the student nurses called security. Security came to see what was happening and, on arriving to the top floor, could see the three student nurses were visibly shaken up from hearing the screaming. The girls explained hearing the sounds of screaming and pointed out the double doors and the lift where the noise was coming from. The security guards seemed confused and told the students that they had just walked from that exact route using those doors and they didn't hear any kind of screaming noise. The security... <coughs> The security team continued to try and reassure the girls and advised if they heard anything else to report uh, and advised if they heard anything else to report it again and they would come back to investigate. Later on in the night, the same screaming could be heard from the same double doors. Instead of reporting this to the security team, the students decided to report the screaming to the matron. The same thing happened again with the confused matron explaining she had also walked the exact same route and through the same doors and could not hear any screaming. The night continued along with the screaming heard by the three students. The girls decided there was safety in numbers and they were better off sticking together and not digging any deeper into what the screaming was due to pure fear. As morning came round, the early shift started making their way onto the ward. The three girls headed home and made their way to the lift at the end of the corridor where the double doors were. No one heard any screaming or sounds when leaving the corridor or using the lift to get home. The girls got into the lift, pulled the shutter door to a close and selected the option to the ground floor. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the lift came crashing to the floor and all that could be heard on the way down was the sound of screams until the horrendous crash of the lift hitting the floor. The three student nurses died. (gasps) in the very same lift where the screaming through the night had come from. It had been their own screams they could hear throughout their night shift. my God. To this day, despite the lift being removed and only stairs remaining, workers on this floor still claim to hear the screams from the end of the corridor. Muchas gracias, very Chelsea. Very good, very good. I mean, I, I'm not clapping death, but that was excellent storytelling, oh, even though you so did get good. my name wrong, Chelsea. But that was very good storytelling. Thank you so much. So, we we don't have time this week for We Get Haunted, so you don't have to, but I'm sure you're all fucking haunted already because of the stories in the pod. Um, so, join us next week where we will... Um, We're going to call up literally on our phones the dead. Uh, So thank you for listening to episode 34. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.